So the challenge is on. Which vehicle can sell the most ice creams? State-of-the-art van or the quirky classic? Car SOS might have started in 2013, but the show looks like something that started way more recently, like 2020. In any case, Car SOS is certainly one of the best car shows out now. First off, it's got great restorations, which is why people watch the show. Secondly, it's not boring. It's cool, isn't it? Cool. It's cool. Man, that's the definition of the word cool. Yeah, do you want to have a go? All right. All right, All right then. <laughs> yeah, for real? Yeah, yeah, sure. See, that's vaporizing, that iron oxide. That is just such a beautiful thing to see. And you can actually see it cleaning the table as well. Now, a lot of you might expect car shows to be unendingly drab, have the most basic dialogue, and have just amazing cars. And maybe, just maybe, have a few tables and chairs thrown about. But that's certainly not Car SOS. The show's presenters have got an amazing sense of humor, good clothes that do not look like they fell out of the sky in the 80s, and the cars they restore aren't your basic classic cars. For example, the show has currently gone through 10 seasons, and in that time, its presenters has restored over 100 classic cars. Some of these classic cars include a 1984 Audi Quattro, a 1965 Mercedes-Benz 230SL Pagoda, an Aston Martin DB6, and even an iconic Volvo P1800. However, if you're a fan of the automotive industry, which you probably are if you've gotten to this point in our video, you'd know that there are many car shows about, and Car SOS, for all its virtue, is just one of those shows. This means that the showrunners must be extra careful about news about the show and the cast, how to manage the news when it falls, and what the pushback is supposed to be. This is especially important when the show is keeping extremely dark secrets that may just threaten to blow the entire operation sky high. In today's video, we'll be examining some of the dark secrets that the show Car SOS has, and how these secrets have stayed hidden from the public eye for so long. While some of the secrets you'll learn about in this video are things that the public has known for years, there are others that you will just be learning about. As you probably know, Car SOS has a very peculiar show structure where the two stars of the show, Tim Shaw and Fuzz Townshend, repair a vehicle without the owner's consent and then present the newly restored car to them at a special event. As Car SOS goes flat out to give another unsuspecting owner the surprise of their life. That is not a car. <laughs> This is my car. <laughs> yes! The vehicle is usually nominated by relatives of the car owner, and the producers of the show have to pick candidates from hundreds of applications every season. Every episode of the show starts with Shaw and Townshend picking up the nominated vehicle while discussing why the car needs to be restored with the nominee's relatives. As the work on the vehicle commences, Shaw is given a list of parts to find to restore the vehicle, and he then has to go searching for these parts wherever he can find them. Since these vehicles are classic cars, it's usually rather difficult for Shaw to find the needed part, but he eventually gets them and brings them back to the workshop. Of course, all of this would be done without the knowledge of the owner of the vehicle. This sacred code was broken though, when the show restored a 1962 Austin Healey Sabring Sprite with the owner's knowledge. The car was special because it was once driven by Steve McQueen and Sir Sterling Moss. After the Car SOS team was done with the restoration, the car was placed in the British Motor Museum for all car lovers to see. To be fair, it's pretty awful to break your own rule, but it's hard to argue that anyone should have a right to restore a 1962 Austin Healey Sabring Sprite that has once been driven by Stephen McQueen's without the owner's consent. Another secret that a lot of people don't know about Car SOS is that Shaw, one of the show's presenters, is a genius, and that's not just because he said it. He was tested and certified as a creative genius by the British Dyslexia Association at the age of 12. By 16, he already had a lot of patents and was on the way to being a really important scientist, or doctor, or engineer. He even received a scholarship to study engineering from Oxford University, and he chose to study mechanical engineering and product design. And he was then awarded as one of the Young Engineers of the Year, not once, but twice, in 1992 and 1994. If you thought we're done with Shaw, well, it appears that we're just getting started. Sean did go to university to become an engineer, but for some reason, he didn't go into that line of work. Instead, he became a radio DJ. Of course, being a radio DJ certainly isn't bad. What's bad, though, is Sean telling media personality Jody Marsh that he would leave his wife and children for her. This naturally made Sean's wife so angry that she went on to sell his car before he came back. The car was worth 25,000 pounds, but she sold it within five minutes for just 50 pence. 
And still, we aren't done with Shaw. When Shaw was still working at the radio station, he ended up being suspended because he tried pranking CEO Andrew Jeffries by breaking into his house. Thankfully, those are all the dark secrets we could muster from the exciting life of Shaw. What about Townshend, Shaw's co-presenter? Does he have any secrets that he might be having? Maybe he doesn't, but we do know that very few people know that he was a musician before choosing to restore classic cars. He's joined two bands in his career, as he's been a drummer for both Pop Will Eat Itself and the general public, which are very interesting names for bands, by the way. From all indications, he wasn't a terrible musician either, as his first single made it to the NME Indie Charts. His solo music career was quite impressive. He's even released two albums. The first, Far In, was released in the UK and US in 1999 and 2001 respectively. He also released his second self-titled album in 2002. Aside from loving cars, Townshend also happens to be a huge bus enthusiast. He loves buses so much that he did an apprenticeship from a local bus company called West Midlands Passenger Transport Executive. Aside from that, Townshend has also worked on buses at the PTE's Dudley Garage. He even says that buses are a huge part of the reason he loves cars. But enough about the co-host of the show. What about the show itself? How does it run? What makes it tick? Well, first off, the filming schedule is hell. Okay, maybe not literal hell, but it's so hectic that one wonders how the stars have any time for themselves. According to trusted sources on the show, Shaw and Townshend have to fix 10 cars every 24 weeks. This means they can only spend about 18 days fixing each car. That means they would each have to spend over 120 man hours on each car, but they end up spending way more than that and have said some cars take about 500 hours combined to get fixed. Another thing that fans of the show typically don't know is the process of choosing Townshend and Shaw. How did it happen? Were they scouted? Did they audition? Well, it appears that they auditioned together. According to Townshend, he'd been called up to audition for the show, and he called Shaw to see if he was interested as well. The company screen tested them together and offered them the parts before they'd even finished. That's how good together they were. At first, no one aside from the casting directors was certain of the choice of going with Townshend and Shaw. A lot of people expected them to work poorly together because they have very different personalities. For example, Townshend is quite reserved and Shaw is certainly more outgoing and eccentric. However, that hasn't been a problem for both men as they pursued a largely productive relationship on and off the screen. Perhaps this could be because they've been friends before the show and already understand how to work around their differences in personalities. You know, the way people in real life usually do. After working for so long on literally over a hundred cars, it's obvious that these men must have favorite cars, and they do. For Shaw, the answer is simple. His favorite vehicle to ever be restored is a Porsche 356. The vehicle is the perfect classic and is such a highly valuable collectible that it could go for more than $100,000 at auctions. Townshend, on the other hand, prefers an AC Asica that was restored in the fourth season of the show. The AC Asica may not be quite as prestigious as the Porsche 356, but both are great looking cars that define an era of car manufacturing. Perhaps the biggest secret of Car SOS is the fact that till now, both Shaw and Townshend still deal with the nervousness of being on the show. It's been almost 10 years and there have been 10 seasons, and both men say they still feel nervousness whenever they have to deliver a restored car to its owner. And it's easy to see why. Classic cars aren't just a plaything or a relic to their owners. They are vehicles of memories that usually have a special meaning to the people who own them. Every dent and scratch on the car could hold a special memory to the owner of the car, and getting rid of that via restoration can be a terrible thing.